Hey guys, to help run the forums, host the website, and travel, we've introduced a universal service fee for in-depth coverage, including this video. My goal is to be unbiased and transparent. It's a privilege to serve you. This is not an endorsement. Let's get into it. We are in one of my favorite spots in Southern California. This is Rancho Palos Verdes. Over there is Redondo Beach, some good waves. A little bit further on, you can see Santa Monica. And apparently this is like the Queen's Necklace or something. I, I think in clear days, you can actually see over to uh, this island. It's over there, Catalina. Just a, just a wonderful view. I hope you guys get a chance to see something like this and enjoy the beach someday. Um, I'm actually gonna take you on a ride later just around this area, some really nice sort of Spanish-inspired architecture. Um, people cycling along, having a nice day. It's a lot of fun. In fact, that's a Stromer ST5 right there. Uh, super nice bike, $10,000 bike. So you, you look at the houses and stuff, you get the idea. What we're looking at today is a little bit more affordable. Uh, this is $5,099. This is the Bulls Iconic Evo TR1. This is a Speed Pedelec Class 3 so you can get around a little bit faster or just enjoy the wind in your hair if you want. Totally set up for urban environments with those nice 65 millimeter wide aluminum alloy fenders, black. They match the blacked out look of the bike. It's sort of a matte with a little bit of gloss and some red accents sprinkled throughout, sort of stickers in this case with the XCR SR Sun Tour air suspension, 34 millimeter stanchions, a little bit, a little bit thicker, 120 millimeters of travel front and rear air suspension so a little bit lighter highly adjustable with compression lockout on the fork and then rebound that's the red dial and then down here so plenty of adjustability on these as well as larger sort of high volume tires these are the Schwabi Supermoto X they're 27.5 by 2.4 so not quite plus size tires that would be 2.6 to 3 inches wide but 2.4 is, is great a little bit more stability a little bit more comfort, traction, and not a whole lot of drag, just because the way these are designed. Um, they don't have a lot of tread on them, like big knobs, as you'd, you'd expect to see on like a mountain bike, some of the other Bulls models that I've been reviewing. Um, but you still get that same sort of performance. Really, really nice. The drivetrain here is definitely set up for speed. 22 tooth proprietary sprocket up front, 11 to 42 in the rear with Shimano Dior. This is the Shadow Plus version, so it's sort of tucked back a little bit and it's got this little gray lever here. So in the down position, shifting is a little bit easier, but if you click it up, it tightens that spring, the chain's not gonna bounce around quite as much and maybe make contact with that right chain stay, but if it does, they have this Velo plastic uh, guard, so it's gonna keep the frame in good shape. You're not gonna get silver nicks in this nice all black paint scheme. And just coming back to that for a minute here, Black spokes, 13 gauge in the rear, 14 up front, so they've gone a little bit thicker in the back to handle additional weight. We've got this really nice sort of minimalist rack where you could hang paneers off the sides, and there's some holes here so you could possibly sort of tie them down if they were sliding forward and back. Uh, and then again, the fenders, the rims, all the hardware. The Bosch stuff tends to be black, but the battery is completely hidden in this case. This is the Power Tube 500. It sits below this nice down tube, a little bit thicker. You know, it, it stands out a little bit, and the Bosch motor tends to be larger than some of the others, the Shimano or Broza, but uh, it's very reliable. It tends to be incredibly responsive and very powerful in this case. So it's performance line speed, about 8.8 .8 pounds on that, and they've got this alloy guard underneath. So even though, you know, it's kind of tilted up for that nice aesthetic, you do get a little bit maybe better ground clearance. I, I don't know. It, it kind of depends, right? It's scooted back. There is that sort of hanging down point right here um, but I think they've optimized it for a shorter chain stay and just to fit this frame it does come in two frame sizes we're looking at the 46 right here so fit should be somewhat adjustable by frame size and then this nice adjustable angle stem zero to 60 degrees and in this position there's a little bit of a rise in that handlebar it does feel fairly comfortable and relaxed I've had this nice like upright body position even though it's such a sporty bike it's fast. It looks like a mountain bike to me in a lot of ways. Just, I mean, look at it, right? Full suspension, but it's totally set up for road. I mean, I think that's neat. I really like what they've done here. Coming back to the hardware for a second, we've got boost hub spacing front and rear. So that's 110 millimeters versus 100. A little bit wider, gives it a sturdy bracing angle. 15 millimeter through axle with quick release in the front. In the back, there's no quick release. Six millimeter hex bolts, 148 millimeters versus 135. 
So again, a little bit wider, helps to fit that cassette and maybe a wider hub. Just an awesome setup, like all around. Feels sturdy, I'm not getting a lot of like frame flex, although the suspension here, it's not just a single uh, sort of unmoving swing arm. We do have pivot points here in multiple places, so they're trying to reduce that rainbow effect of the bike uh, the rear portion of the bike sort of going up and down, it's going to travel more vertically and that should help for braking and for pedaling. Um, it's a pretty, pretty well optimized system. 165 millimeter crank arms, they might go up to 170 depending on the, the frame size that you get. And then these pedals, they're well go, uh, decent. A lot of times I've been seeing like cage style pedals on some of the other Bulls bikes. That's not the case here. I like the rubber traction so if you do slip off, maybe you won't cut yourself quite as easily. Uh, and again, you might be riding this in rain. I love that this bike is just so well specced. Like you've got this alloy chain ring protector. So if you have pants on or something, your pants aren't gonna touch that chain. Um, and then it'll also probably keep the chain on a little bit easier, it won't flop off if you do encounter some rough terrain. We've got some cobblestones up there that I'm excited to show you a little bit later. And then we've got the stanchion guard here, just molded right into the aluminum alloy frame, 7005 aluminum. Um, so this is pretty high grade and just a lot of little extra design tweaks here to optimize performance. I looked at a bike a lot like this last year from Bulls. It wasn't available in the United States, but it got me very excited. They did have like a hardtail version, uh, but full suspension is totally the way to go. For me personally, I have some knee sensitivity. So yeah, the front, my hands, my shoulders and everything, I want that protected. But when I go off of curbs or whatever, I, I tend to stand up and I use my legs and, and kind of my ankles a little bit to absorb some of that shock, but it's really nice to have that built right into the bike. So I'm not, you know, you can always do a seat post suspension, 30.9 millimeters, 350 millimeter length on this, by the way, but the seat post suspension, you know, that protects your body. Well, I stand up a lot of times for big bumps. So this protects my legs, my knees, totally worth it to me. And in a lot of ways, I think the price point on this bike is fairly good. Coming back to the hardware for a second, We've got this nice adjustable length kickstand. It stays plenty clear of those crank arms if you're pedaling backwards or moving the bike through a garage or something. 203 millimeter disc brake rotors, Tetro Dorado, front and rear, 203 millimeters, that's incredible. That's really good leverage for stopping. It's also gonna be good for cooling. You've got these three, maybe four finger brake levers, depending on how big your hands are. And then they're wired in. So whenever you pull either one of those brake levers, the rear light blinks on. So I'm gonna go ahead and boot up the display for a second here and pull that. There you go. See how it goes bright. Definitely appreciate that. Supernova aluminum alloy housing. It stays low, stays out of the way. It's not gonna get bumped as easily or if you're wearing a coat, a lot of times if you clip a light here onto the seat post, your coat can block that. Or if you had luggage or something, some extra cargo on the rear. This rack isn't really set up as a platform as much as for panniers hanging down off the side. And you know, it's it's an interesting design because it's not suspended. This is part of the rear. So, you know, if the back of the bike's going up and down, there's gonna be a little bit more action happening with your cargo. I like what Reese and Mueller have done. They have some fully suspended rear racks, but then their bikes weigh a lot more. This bike's like 60.4 pounds. Not too bad. I think the comparable bikes from Reese and Mueller that I'm talking about that I reviewed recently they're in the 70 plus pounds. So it's like 10 extra pounds for like kind of a stiffer frame. They tend to be a little more expensive. Bulls is like a dealer brand from Germany. Uh, they're all over Europe and North America now, US and Canada, doing a really good job. They're sold through shops. You can get fitted, you can test ride it. They've got a two year comprehensive warranty, five years on the frame, good stuff all around. Coming up here to the headlight, we've got this like Fushan. Eh, it's fairly nice. It doesn't have an alloy cover, but I like that it does have sort of side cutout so you get a little bit of visibility from the side. Unfortunately, the tires don't have reflective sidewalls. Um, one thing I noticed about the lights, so they're both wired in, they run off that main battery pack. They, they turn on and they kind of stay on automatically. That's the default. Even though there is like a light option, you can a lot of times like hold the plus button here and it'll turn on and off the lights. That's not the case with the Speed Pedal X setup. Some shops might be able to work with you or swap the display out for the Intuvia. I can't say for sure, but just kind of worth calling out. So the light, even though it's sort of like a, eh, you know, gets the job done sort of light, I feel like it's decent with the reflector there, the side visibility. And I like that it's not connected here on the arch of the suspension, like so many bikes, cause then it's bouncing up and down and it's partially blocked by the tire. So they've done a really good job. There's a, a really good balance of sort of value here. You'll notice that with the derailleur, 
they did include the the shadow plus clutch but this isn't shimano dior xt or slx or anything it's just dior right so there's some really interesting little things that i'm noticing as someone who's really into e-bikes and looking through all the specs and stuff i love that they added some bottle cage bosses there so you could use that for like a folding lock or water bottle and maybe have one that tips out to the side really like that in addition to the cargo back here i really like the celly royale e-zone saddle this is really comfortable and some of the other bulls models they've got like the physics saddles and stuff i'm talking about the mountain bottles it, it just doesn't feel great to me you know a lot of times i'm not wearing my my bike pants with padding and stuff so this one feels good just with regular pants and i love that shifters up here i'm a big fan of this we have two-way action on the like the high gear so that takes you into higher gears and then multi-step i think it's maybe up to three there we go three on the low gear so that's really nice um, i've ridden with some of the new sram systems and they seem to only have one click also check this out we've got three 10 millimeter spacers and one five millimeter spacer as well as the riser for that adjustable angle stem that's part of what gives you that upright comfortable body position and allows you to spot traffic so you're going to look cool and you're going to feel awesome on this bike like from a i don't know radical standpoint fast like sleek cool graphics integrated battery low evenly distributed weight like they're doing all the stuff that you want but you're still going to be able to just ride it and enjoy it and and not have to be like hunched way over and stuff love that the grips are still locking they're not going to spin on you quite as easily just a just a great setup all around i'm going to jump into some of the motor and battery specs in a minute here but bulls is still specking the faster four amp charger from bosch 1.7 pounds on this thing fairly portable it's going to fill a little bit faster than the stock two amp chargers that i see with so many other e-bike companies that's a big deal for me because with a higher capacity battery, it's nice to be able to charge quickly. Um, this is the PowerTube 500. It offers 36 volts, 13.4 amp hours, can be charged on or off the frame. And I'm just searching my pocket here for the keys. Here's the charging port while we're over here though. So you can pull this rubber piece back. Note that if you were plugged in though and you move these crank arms accidentally, it could collide and maybe pop that plug out. But it's a pretty durable interface. It's proprietary to Bosch. I feel like a lot of times it's hard to get this to go back in. See, I feel like you should just be able to push and it should stick. You know, kind of realign it, push, it's still not working. So I feel like every time I'm having to like fumble with this a little bit, there, got it to stick. I wish Bulls could get that right. For, for so long, their battery port covers have just been annoying for me personally. And it doesn't seem like a difficult thing, but thankfully they got most of the rest of the bike, right? And insert the key here for a second. There we go. Turn it. And then the battery drops out just a little bit. I'm going to put these in my pocket. It doesn't drop all the way though, which is nice because it would collide with this fender and it might fall all the way off. You don't want to drop this. The Power 2 battery weighs 6.3 pounds on its own, but when you add this metal shielding that sort of matches the bike and adds some protection, it's 7.2 pounds. So it's definitely heavier than the older Power Pack, but it frees up that space for a bottle cage and stuff and it looks nice. So there's a little button here. Press the little button and then it goes the rest of the way. Oh, there it is. Nice, so 7.2 pounds here. We already talked about the specs. Roughly 500 watt hours can be charged on or off the frame. It's got the little battery percentage readout. It's a good setup. And then when it's time to put it in, just gotta line it up carefully like that. It's more of a two hand thing, but there we go. Did it with one, not bad. And it clicks in and you're ready to go. As far as the motor, the performance line motors from Bosch they use this proprietary sprocket that spins two and a half revolutions for every single crank revolution. So one time around like this is two and a half times on the little, little sprocket 22 tooth. It's fast, it gives you excellent chain retention, probably provides a mechanical advantage for the motor, but there's some friction in there with the reduction gearing. So if you're pedaling unpowered, unassisted, or maybe you're trying to exceed 28 miles per hour, um, 45 kilometers per hour on this particular model, it's going gonna, it's gonna to introduce just a little bit of drag. So that's my complaint. It's something that, you know, we talk about on a lot of the reviews and stuff. It's one of the trade-offs with Bosch, but you do get shift detection. You do get incredibly fast uh, reads. So there's like a magnet. There's a sensor right there. It's measuring pedal cadence and pedal torque over a thousand times per second. It's pretty incredible. Um, when you combine that with the shift detection, listening for changes in shifting pressure, in addition to your pedal stroke, it's just it's a drivetrain that's not going to get worn out quite as easily and it's going to shift more smoothly more naturally so i really appreciate that i think we've gotten a good overview of the bike so i'm going to jump into 
the display panel up here. This is the Bosch Curion, not my favorite display personally from the Bosch line, but it's still better than most. Okay, there's a little micro USB port right there that I was hoping would be a charging port, but it's not set up that way. That's only for diagnostics. If you upgrade and have your dealer, maybe you spend 150, 200 bucks to buy that hardware and mount it here, it's gonna be bigger, easier to read. It does have a functioning micro USB port on the side. That would have been my preference. This saves some money from bowls. It looks a little sportier and cleaner. But a lot of times when I'm riding in urban environments, I wanna have my phone out for GPS or maybe charge a music player or something. You've got that high capacity battery. I wish you could tap into it. Um, so anyway, we press the power button on the top of the display here. Comes to life very quickly. Small monochrome readout, not removable. It does swivel a little bit if you don't over tighten it. So you can see that here, moving up and down a little bit to reduce glare. We've got speed at the top. You can change from miles per hour to kilometers per hour holding minus and tapping power. So we just switch back and forth. In the middle, we've got sort of assist level. If you press the plus or minus, we go to eco, which is the lowest tour, sport, or turbo. So you'll get increasing power, but also you'll use more of your battery more quickly in those higher levels of assist. I'm gonna stay in eco. Down at the bottom, we have that light icon because the lights are on by default. And then five ticks on that battery infographic, 20% increments. It would be nice if those were a little finer, like 10 bars or maybe a percentage readout. And that is the case with the new Bosch Kiox display but that adds some cost and it doesn't seem to be spec'd on this bike. I have seen it on some of their higher end E-mountain bikes though. So, you know, Bulls is definitely using it. Maybe we'll see that in the future, but I, I hear that it adds several hundred dollars to sort of the end price. So I think, you know, trying to come back to value here, this, this display still gets the job done. It's fairly easy to reach too while you're, you're pedaling. You don't have to take your hands off, but you do kind of look over and down versus like front and center. Um, these buttons, they kind of click inward. So if you click near the display, that's that's gonna be pretty consistent. If you click down here, you, they don't really, actually this one, I don't know if they redesigned it, but it does feel a little bit easier to click. In the past, that's been kind of a complaint. Yeah, I guess at the very bottom, you can't click in because they seem to pivot down like this, if that makes sense. Uh, there are some other readouts here. So if I hold minus, it goes from assist level to trip readout, total distance, so like odometer and then range. So as I arrow through some of these different assist levels like turbo, it says, yeah, you know, 27 miles, probably around 30, that's my estimate, starting fresh. And then eco, 75. So I think you could actually get up to almost 100 miles with this, depending on your weight, tire pressure, if you're climbing super steep hills, or if it's windy, those all factor in, they all play a part, but it's neat to have a dynamic range readout as you're going. So it will calculate just for you. Uh, there's a few more options in here. So if I go to trip distance and I hold plus and minus, it resets and clears that. That's really nice. And then there's this like walk mode thing. If we press walk and then hold the plus button, there we go. The bike kind of pushes itself forward. That could be nice. Again, 60 pounds here. If you got a flat tire or maybe you just want to walk with your friend in a place where it's not appropriate to ride, this bike's going to be able to handle that. I really appreciate it. You know, it's a, it's a sweet bike. Um, this is probably one of the bikes that I would choose for myself. I feel like, yeah, the price is higher, but you're getting all the latest technology. You're getting good support from bulls. It looks cool. The sizes, I, I like it personally. And I actually don't do a ton of like mountain biking. I like to commute and occasionally take a trail. And even though these are sometimes, you know, you look at it, it's sort of a slick tire. I think they're going to handle dirt uh, fairly well. And that's been my experience here. Just messing around for this review. So I'm gonna put this charger in my bag and we'll take a little ride with you. Okay, I'll just stow that kickstand. I'm gonna start off on the dirt just to illustrate how comfortable it is. No problem. I'm gonna take it off-road a little bit here. Very stable with those wider tires. And I'm still feeling some of the bumps, but you know, I'm not really dialed in right now for uh, these aren't sagged appropriately for my body weight. Hit the curb. Nice. And that's what I'm talking about. When I went off that curb, I relied on my legs a little bit to sort of cushion my upper body and the bike cushioned my legs because it has that rear suspension. So that's just a really sweet setup. I'm in eco mode right now, but I'm gonna take it all the way up to turbo so you get an idea of how that motor sounds at the higher levels of assist. Shifting up. A little bit whiny, 
Uh, the Bosch motor is kind of known for that. That's just how it sounds when you're in the higher powers and you're pedaling at a higher RPM, but it does support you up to 120 RPM. Some motors fade out around 120 or they stop at 100. Some of the Bosch motors actually, like the Active Line and the Active Line Plus, they go to like 100 and 105 RPM. So for me, this is a nice sporty option, something that I really enjoy as someone who prefers to spin. And if you're coming up to a hill and you're gonna have to climb, it actually supports you really well. I'm gonna do that real quick. It's just beautiful, beautiful church. E-bikes make it so easy and more enjoyable to stop at a stop sign because getting going again is not so much of a problem. So here we are, we're in this nice neighborhood. I'm gonna downshift. You can really hear the motor going nuts because I'm at a higher RPM, but it didn't fade out. It didn't drop out on me. Still giving me plenty of support. I'm gonna do some more climbing here. Beautiful, and I'm gonna stop right here and then start again. No problem. Didn't have to stand up, my knees aren't hurting. It's supporting me and this is steep. Like I'm on a pretty steep section. That's the beauty of e-bikes and especially a higher torque motor. Peak torque on this is about 63 Newton meters. But if you compare it to the CX motor from Bosch, that's their EMTB specific motor that goes 20 miles per hour. That one gets up to 75 Newton meters. So you are trading off a little bit of torque. It still performs great. And look at that one hand full stop because of those nice 203 millimeter disc brakes. Okay guys, from here you can see the motor, the chain, sprockets, and a little bit of travel as we go over some of these cobblestones and off of a couple curbs. Uh, just gives you an up close view of the drive system and the drivetrain. Slick tires aren't quite as grippy as the knobby ones, but as you'd expect, but they're doing okay. Definitely feel safe in this uh, kind of dirt path. fast we can get this thing going on the straightaway. Oh, look at that view. Isn't that nice? We're up to 27.5 right there. And it does fade out a little bit before 28. There we go. And I didn't downshift, so I was a little bit slower getting started. It's like school building of these pine trees that kind of get windswept. Here it is, here are the cobblestones. So listen for fenders.
Beautiful, huh? Look at this. Wow. There's just so much beauty out there. I wish I could share this with you guys. And uh, I hope that we're all able to share some of this stuff together because there's just, there's more than enough. It really feels like uh, people getting along, enjoying the weather. It's an expensive place to be, but um, I don't know. I just, it's just, it's just wonderful. Really nice. Really special ride. So I think that's about it, you guys. Here's another look at the Bulls Iconic Evo TR1 for 2019. I'll have the full ride up on this with standover height, width, length, all the other specs that I record back at the website. And maybe you can chime in on the forums if you've got last year's model or you're thinking about upgrading. I always enjoy that. I like seeing your pictures too if you find an accessory that works particularly well with the racks and stuff. So that's electricbikereview.com. Have fun out there. Love each other. We'll see you next time.